Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brutzon. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, it's a show about weirdos, doggone it. My name is John Boy, it is John Boy time. John Fahey, your host, the COVID kid, COVID barely 18. Uh, joining me as ever on the program, thinker, stinker, pee-pee drinker, high-functioning pervert, a man I'll love till the day I die, Aaron Joseph Pita. And I loved Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> and Elliot loved you. Hey. hey. To his right, my left, Frenchman, henchman, handsome Matt Hi. Rousseau. Hi. How you doing with that? Uh, good. I'm. Good. I, I feel good today. I feel good. I'm uh, looking for a full time Frenchman henchman. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I don't need a full time service man to worship slash clean his hairy unwashed. I mean, I'm here. <laughs> um. Well, boys. Um. Of course, we. I. I have to start by saying, uh, rest in peace, Larry King. Yes. Oh man. Uh, Aaron, of course, said some things. I mean, he coined it. He made some. I'm a prophet. He made some predictions. Prof- oh well, I guess that the ninety thousand year old walking corpse wasn't going to survive. If you guy with COVID in the hospital. If you guys, if you guys don't, don't know or remember, uh, Aaron, uh, I talked about uh, on the. Uh, was that Patreon or? No, well, I texted it to you. You texted? No, no, but I talked about you, it. Yes, we did talk about show. it on the Patreon last week. Oh, okay, so it was Patreon. We'll but throw it up on the Instagram. It's uh, yeah, I got a text from Aaron that I woke up to. Who he goes, Larry King is COVID. <laughs> no way that skeleton pulls through. <laughs> Necropolis, you're on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so Jesse texted me today. She goes, Does Aaron feel bad? <laughs> I was like, he does not. He's out. Th- you know no. what he's it's doing not, right now? It's not Alex Trebek, so Aaron doesn't care. No, I mean, listen, I feel bad for, you know, his, I love the guy. His, his, hundred, his 105-year-old grandson. Yeah, all of his mm-hmm. eight ex-wives. Uh, I think know. I think he might have been married nine times. Without it, without exaggeration. I think it might be nine. Um, I mean, but, from his first but a lot one, of kids. His, his first marriage, he must have netted like a dowry of cows or something like right. that. Back right. in yeah. the well, he agricultural had the one, revolution. He had the like, one black cow in town, and so that's really the way he was hunched over. Kid. He looks like he was only knocking up desks. <laughs> <laughs> he's fucking, he's he up, looks, you know, he's up there what now. A, what a fucking desk humping looking motherfucker, dude! He, ever, he was bent right over. Well, there. he's an old man. Oh, you know, he's sitting at the desk all day. Now he's up there digging into that shaka souffle. <laughs> <in the sky>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I like um, I like uh, in, in the obituary. First of all, they bring up Norm McDonald's impression of him in the obit, which is great. Um, if you ask me, Timothy McVeigh is no good. Um, I think the obit's always a good time for other people. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and they were talking, you know, because because one of the the best moments we talked about with Larry was the um, asking asking Jerry Seinfeld if his show got canceled. Yes, yes. And Jerry's going, dude, the highest rated show on TV canceled. And he really, really makes him sit in it. And le- and Jerry is looking at other producers for like, how do you let this guy host a show? Well, Larry, Larry always said he said he was he was proud of. Well, he, oh, was, he was like, I'm all oh, I'm. I don't do any constantly. Reason. I'm constantly curious, but I don't do any anything before. I don't look any up any any interviews. I don't look up nothing. And someone on Twitter they wrote like he was uh, a lazy workaholic. Right, like he just loved asking people questions. He didn't actually give a shit so of like remembering nosy. them. Oh yeah, yeah. He was just nosy. He didn't care about well, no, like no, knowing. He, he's... Here's what's really funny is one of the King's things, which Jerry Seinfeld uh, I think yeah. said was the the what the original tweet, yes, which, which is just his non sequiturs in a uh, column format in USA. Yeah, Today. I mean, that's a thing that's been in newspapers forever. There's a guy in my local hometown who would do that for. But sports. I think King's things is the most famous of it, and it's it's, it's probably the most it's, famous, and, and it's about anything under the sun. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing with the, the this guy in this newspaper writing about sports. It's like anything that happened with sports. But Larry King's would be like, um, he'd be like, uh, like DeSeal's dream. <laughs> Like that type of shit. And then the next one would be something. He'd be like, I don't think any team under 500 should get into the playoffs. And the next one would be like, I don't know anybody who ever read Moby Dick. I mean, it's like, and Mickey, like Mickey, Larry. Rooney's, Mickey Rooney's like, Melons, what are they for? Yeah, Larry, you know everybody. It's Jack yeah. Handy's shallow thoughts. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, um, It'll it's really good missed. stuff. But like, is it? Yeah, yeah. He, had a good, he had a very good run. You don't know anybody that guy. read Moby Dick? Are you kidding no, yourself? He just wasn't curious. No, he yeah, you fast. never asked anybody. Well, and if he did ask anybody, he forgot it 
because he had to ask someone else, what, what kind of light bulbs do you like? You know, it's like, or he had one interview with somebody's like, well, it's just like in Moby Dick, and he goes, nobody reads. I that. don't know anybody who read that. Yeah. Oh, I got an idea. <laughs> I'll write that. Down. Warren Beatty has never read it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Therefore, no one has. Um. So anyway, rest in peace, Larry. Um, good run. I, 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 a broadcasting legend. Yeah. yeah. Was it good? Maybe. <laughs> but, but but he also was game. Conan pointed out like he was always game for like all the shit Conan wanted to do. Oh yeah, yeah. He was He's good, definitely he, better than Piers Morgan. Yeah, he was a good sport. Oh he, yeah. He came on. Um, he came on uh, the the Norm podcast. Um, and he said, I, I remember very very vividly, uh, which freaks the shit out of Norm Macdonald. He goes, uh, he was like, a, uh, you believe in uh, like you know uh, heaven or afterlife? <laughs> and Larry's like, no. When you're dead, it's just black dirt, nothing. <laughs> so I would oh, know. I'm halfway there. <laughs> yeah, I've been back. Hope Larry's having a good time in the sandbox. Um. Aaron, uh, I, I would like to introduce the, the, the profile. Actually, uh, I'll start with Matt. Uh, Fuck. Uh, oh, oh no, we'll, we'll go. We'll come right back. Hey, to you. Matt. We might actually have to do a tennis match here and go Matt and Aaron. Matt. Hey. Um, Matt. What are your things that you say? Uh, uh, you quote f- pretty frequently. Is the, uh, the Bible, of course. No, no. Shit. Uh, it's the uh, the quote, and I, I would like you to expand on repeating it and what you think the meaning of it is uh, about the dream deferred. Right, right. Langston Hughes' uh, poem. It's an untitled poem in his collection. It's just called Harlem Bracket 2, I think. Uh, and it's, in essence, it's, it's, if I have the wording right, it's what happens to a dream deferred. Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Does it fester like a sore and then run? Does it crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Or does it stink like rotten meat? Mm. Maybe it sags like a heavy load. Or does it explode? Wow. And, you know, it's something that I've always seen a reference to any sort of, um, especially like any blacks protesting. Mm. Fucking Ka- Kaepernick taking a knee. It's like, well, he's just taking a knee. Like, and not, now they're, they're everybody's, oh, the CVS, they burned down the CVS. It's like, well, what happens to a dream deferred? Like how many fucking years mm. do you want them? They've already done the sugary sweet. Right. <laughs> like they've done everything else. Now they're exploding. What right. the fuck do you want? Now, Aaron, uh, maybe you can do the same thing for me, but with the philosophy of sex ed. Oh, boy. Well, who's to say? Right. Is that weird? No, okay, to start with, oh, the, the, well, you got to give the background. Well, okay, now sex ed is a uh, sex education uh, educator. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, not board certified in any way, shape, or form. Uh, the New York State Board of Sexual Health requires sex ed to say sex ed Vincent is a sex education enthusiast and in no way should his <laughs> comments be taken as any sort of medical Advice. Hmm. Well, they're uh, entitled to their opinion. Yeah. Hey. So, Sex Ed was a sketch on SNL, um, done a couple times by uh, fucking what's his name, and it was a it was like a one two one or two season guy, hmm. um, and he did this sex sex ed guy thing, and he would do these sex education seminars like in a fucking Ramada Inn or whatever. Right. Uh, I guess the, the actual thesis. The actual thesis who's is, is who's to say now is it is it weird. If I pee into a cardboard birthday hat Mm -hmm. and pour that down, let's say, John's back (laughs) and catch it in another cardboard birthday hat, Mm -hmm. Matt climaxes because of it. Is that weird? Right. Is that abnormal? No. Who's Who's to to say? say? Not to me. Right. Now, what if I uh, take this apple and I uh, I polish it between our butt cheeks? Is that weird? Is that abnormal? No. Not hurting anybody. Who's, Who's to, say? to say? Unless you get get it stuck up inside of you. Who's so, to say? So that's uh, that's where we're starting. <laughs> so we're starting with starting uh, with uh, um, uh, a dream defer. And who's to say? Right, right. That's where we're going here. And I, I wanted to talk to you. Um, this is uh, brought this to me by mysterious. my my uh, my friend uh, Morgan, who uh, uh, she just sent me the the Wikipedia on this this gent and. Um, it was uh, it was a real wild ride, like Mister Toad. And uh, <laughs> I I was I, I just got kind of caught up in it, and um, very much the who's to sayness of um, what's going on here, but also um, feeling like uh, this this gentleman kind of had a a dream deferred. So Miroslav, uh, it's, it's it's pronounced Miroslav uh, Tiki. <laughs> Miroslav. Miroslav. So it's like a Russian uh, Eastern Bloc. Czech. Czech. Yeah. Tiki. It's a uh, tiki is really how it's it's pronounced. T i c h y. Exactly. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, it's tiki. And um, pull the shirt down. So he he was a uh, 
he was an artist in uh, in the uh, you know Czechoslovakia before the uh, Soviet invasion, and he was a painter uh, that was kind of going on the Joseph Capic style, which is um, actually the guy who invented the word robot. Um, it was popularized by his brother. Um, really? Yes, yes. And uh, but he, you know he did poetry and other things too, and he was you know just a, a pretty typical artist. And he was in, you know, a fine arts school, and he showed promise. What was the, What's this? What's the style of painting? Um, for for Capic? Yes, it is. Let me see here. Uh, what? No, that's this not Capex. Right, and you said this is the eighties. The eighties. The what what, year what is the this? hell are you talking about? Soviet invasion, pal. Come on. What year is this? This is. I mean, which is which is what? What year? What year is he painting in that style? That would be uh, like the 60s. Okay. Yeah. Now that's not Capic. This is Tichi. Right. Tichi. Yeah. Tichi. Capic, older. Exactly. And he was, right. a, he was, he was a writer. He was a poet. Uh, Capic was a, and, uh, a painter. And um, he was, you know, he was, it was. But we do want a visual of this Capic style. If you could give us kind of a cliff notes. Capic for idiots. Do you have any idea what that, just so we have an image in our mind? He's more known for the literary works, but um, it was. Uh, I mean, I can give you. I can give you sure. actual. actual uh, we, yeah, I can use word, my words to describe it. It is. Um, I mean, this is this is an example. Okay. okay. Uh, and so there's some realism, okay, so a little, some little, cubism. Little, uh, yeah, a little cubism. Yeah, a little bit of that, and um, it was uh, not total realism, not portraiture. Right. Right. It's somewhere you know. A little. Like, imagine like a, a softer less fucked up Picasso's yeah. cubism. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of between all of that, right? Yeah. At the same time. Yeah. And so he was just going along in that um, that sort of uh, thing. And he was, you know, at the Academy of Fine Arts in Prague. Uh, and he seemed to be really on his way to doing a modern style that was, you know... Um, and in 1948, uh, the communist uh, takeover happens. Mm -hmm. And so he's still at the Academy... And they're they're kind of going like, uh, oh, we want you to draw, you know, fucking uh, instead of women to do uh, workers in overalls. Yeah, but they're harvesting wheat. Yeah, you know, guys with steel hammers and uh, and a Mario hats. Big, yeah, yeah, hairy, hairy, hairy chests and oh, shit. Those, the old Soviet style from World War Two is a lot of like you know these these hard lines. Mm -hmm. Uh, like strong Soviet propaganda art is beautiful, incredible, absolutely yeah. amazing. Um, and, you, uh, and then you saw some of it here in the states too, but it, they just really knocked it out of the park. They knocked it out of the yeah. park, and I, they had a way. Of, and then they turned the park into a, a gulag. <laughs> but 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 the the art, I think, more than anything, on a propaganda level, had uh, the the aspirations to the future mm -hmm. that were inherent in it. Right, it, because the present sucked. <laughs> but it, also, but, it, but it, it also, was it was like a borderline, you know, sci-fi uh, oh, level of absolutely uh, the statue of the future. Uh, the statue uh, commemorating Yuri Gagarin. Yeah. In uh, right, in right. Russia is incredible. Uh, right. A Superman level statue. Right. But all of their stuff was just really their architecture. That whole Soviet is really great. I feel like I know, and it, it's kind of fitting in with my idea of it. There was more of a top-down. This is. It's not that you create the propaganda. It's that we tell you, you what to create. You, you do it in our style. Yeah. Whereas I feel like the American propaganda was more like I'm an artist. Well, a lot of the, a lot, my style. A lot of the artists, um, you know, in the early days of, of the Soviet regime, um, were into it. So they were they were seen as uh, you know. Uh, Kind of collaborating on the art uh, with yeah, the yeah. state. I'm sure you're more likely to hire the guy who wants to yeah, do it too. Because if you didn't, he, he was the other guy you sent right. to do uh, But also, it's you know, it's recognizing that you know the 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 best person to espouse the propaganda is the guy that believes it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, there's it, not going to be any subtle right negative messages. Right, the guy that doesn't believe it's going to do fucking bullshit MS Paint drawings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the best I can do. Or yeah. it's awesome, and then there's like some secret little message in it, like mm. free booze in the back or something. <laughs> right, because that's. That's very pong, dangerous. Ping pong pizza. So it was it was that it was that kind of thing where they're like you know the uh, the the get rid of the feminine form and uh, just talk about how good work is. Right? It's so crazy because it's Mother Russia. Right. Right. But this is now Czechoslovakia. Right. Don't forget that. Um, but it it is the Soviet the Soviets are are taking over right all of the Baltic states. Yes, is where, is where we're at. Right. Right. Okay. Right. But it's cousin Czech. Mate. Cousin? Cousin? Cousin Laddie? Uh, Alki? 
so they're they're um yeah they're they're all you know told to do this shit and Tiki is just like no I'm I'm leaving and um then they're like immediately like military service for you <laughs> right and he does that and he comes back to uh, his town which is a town called Kajov. Kajov. and he lives with his parents and he's got like a, a disability pension and he's painting uh, in his studio and he's got a disability pension. Yes. As a young man living with his parents because he did he get injured or or um or like his disability is not following orders. <laughs> it's I, I mean I mean it, it basically becomes that because he is kind of shutting down entirely. And he will Mentally. Well he, emotionally socially. Got it. He will not do anything and I guess they're kind of handling it in this way where they're going like, Okay, this guy won't play ball, but like we don't need to really kill him. He's just kind of a pain in the ball. It's a waste of bullets. Yeah. And so he's, um, you know, taking, like, they'll, they'll get him out of, they'll throw him into, like, the psychiatric facility when it's, like, May Day or, like, big days for the state where you don't really want an embarrassing guy around. Mm. And um, he... Uh, Every time there's a parade, he gets help. Yeah. And uh, they would um, they would bring him to the, yeah, state psychiatric clinic and... Um, or maybe not help back then. They were just trying to, yeah, and so he then he did like I think eight years. They they were basically just trying to say he was a dissident and break him. And you know his his um his parents are alive. Um, obviously you know he goes to live with them, but um, he uh, he was kind of like uh, viewed you know as, as this possible real problem, but he wasn't really interested in that. He was just interested in like not doing what you say. Right. Rather than undermining the state, right? And I guess everybody else is kind of going with the flow, mm. and he's like, uh, "That's like, uh, I'm anti-flow." Um, <laughs> well, no, he's just he's just kind of left out of it, you know. Um, so you know, and it, it's crazy because he seems like a really crazy person, but really the state is very paranoid, right? And Ben, this is also past the time. So this is what the fifties now. Um, in in uh, yeah, right. So so it's really past the time of like Stalinist death camps. Right, right, right. So this the, is now the, just the, the this is now happened just, in forty eight. Yeah, so. This is now just empire for them, and so right. they're not. It's not really in the killing dissidents stage. It's just and don't forget too. It's it's and now, killing pili- killing dissidents is n- notoriously unpopular, especially in the but, heart of Europe. I think as opposed to. Deeper into Russia, maybe, right. or the East, or whatever. Right. There's kind of a thing where you're like, um, you're, you're trying to win over the population, exactly, and and hopefully expand it, right? right. I was I was going to say dissidents hate this one trick, but actually, it actually is good for recruitment if you do kill. It's good for dissident recruitment if you kill dissidents. But yeah, right. there's there's continued effort, efforts to normalize him. Sure, and so I think this is kind of the part where I I wonder about the dream deferred thing, where I think about. Him on his way to being a modern artist, and then this happens to him. And not only is his personal life changed, but also the entire world around him has changed. Sure. And um, a lot of that is um, a huge lack of freedom, right? Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, he's... You know, it's, it's not really fun to be friends with the guy that's the the nail that sticks up, Right. So you're going to be more alienated, and it's really just you, basically, and your parents then. And he, in the 1960s, he just starts, like, growing out a beard and, dr- dr- like, just wearing a ragged suit. Is this guy, like, Eastern, Eastern, Eastern Block Gary Newman? Uh, I, I think it's, it's, yeah, it might be some, some, some autism kind of at play there. Um, but he's, he looks way more homeless, mm. right? And he's, he's, uh... He's, he just starts fucking wandering around town, um, and he has a homemade camera, and he starts taking pictures with his homemade camera. A homemade camera? Yes. And, it, and is this, it, can he not get one because of uh, you know trade embargoes? He's probably not even allowed in the store, if right. there is yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but or so, the, the state camera distribution center. Right, right. All right. But he's... So I think in seventy two they they nationalize all private property and he's um seventy seventy two I believe it's seventy two that happens and so all of his paintings are just thrown out in the street Jesus Christ so that- another way to just be like fuck you wait oh. wait wait so they nationalize the property and why why do they throw the paintings in the street yeah let's then? not confuse nationalizing private property which in itself sucks with destroying art in the streets. 
But I mean, I understand the. the well, cost. also throwing it out isn't destroying it. It's just get the fuck, get move a ticket somewhere else. Oh, but, 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 this is the but, people's but, streets. But, but why? I I don't. Um, I'm confused. They're taking the land. Okay. What else? Well, because I don't know. It, because sometimes they would just take it and then either either. You know, well, they don't think it has any value, right? right. He's, and he's a dissident, so they're kind of trying to right. So I think I treat think, him badly. I think the point that we're getting at is that it's not necessarily you know normally when the state in in communist takeovers like this, it, when the state is seizing property or means of productions or whatever, it's it's because there is inherent value in it, and they want to then have a top down control of it. For him, the it, property has value, right? But the art they don't give a fuck about. When you when you say property, you mean land. Yeah, the, okay, the, well, the, the that's, studio. I think that's that's just the the. the Got you. Yeah. Happened. Well, no, if they're throwing it in the street, they're not seizing the property. Right. They are just throwing it in the street. Yeah. So when you say pro- we were just we're just having a disconnect on what we see as property. Sh- sheer sheer real estate. Got it. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. And so they take that and they're they throw this shit in the street, mm-hmm. and that's basically kind of the end of his drawing and painting. Mm-hmm. And he also was kind of coming to this conclusion anyway that he was like. Uh, what the fuck am I going to draw anyway? Right. Mm-hmm. And he he leans harder into photography because he's into this now th- feeling that reality is uh, an illusion or a reflection mm. um, uh, or um, what you see is uh, right. a reality you can't see. So why why draw things that aren't real when you can just take a picture of something and that, is, that, e- that and is equally that unreal. is equally yeah. unreal? Yeah. And you know I think it's 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 something that is interesting in. Uh, the way of, um, you know, art is supposed to like take you from one place and move you to another, right? And we talked about in uh, the Burden episode that a sculpture is something you're supposed to move around, mm-hmm. right? And I think by virtue of, of something being in the past, the world has moved around it, right? You know, yeah, if, yeah. so it's it's just a whole thing where you you go like, not only this moves me somewhere else by virtue of seeing it because it's the past, but also... This is the world that this piece of art, the fi- the photograph, doesn't exist anymore. And not only that is, if you think about it in a time space way, is how far away. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And time kills. It does. And uh, yeah, it is live. Any any you know any any photograph you take is, um, a uh, a, a tombstone to a moment that's died. Right. 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 The Mitch Hedberg. Uh, before I, uh, this is a picture from when I was younger. Yeah, every picture is from when you right. were younger. You're right, right. Um, so yeah, he 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 just gets into photog- all we get of old stars. All we get of the stars are their old photographs. That's that's very true. And boy, do they look great. Mm. Mm, Orion's penis. I see it all the time. Hey, Ryan. Orion. Oh, oh Ryan. Ryan. So he he's like um, he's just seeing everything differently now through photography and. And he's going deeper into it, and he's also going deeper into being a misfit. And he's he's basically, you know, go, going around dressed as a bum, but he is a bum though, kind of. And he's a bum in bum's clothing. <laughs> and so the the the, <laughs> the cameras he's making are out of cardboard tubes, rubber bands, wooden spools, uh. <sighs> Sanded plexiglass that then he would he would kind of finish in toothpaste and cigarette ashes, and so you get this very uh, you know like when they used to rub Vaseline on the lenses right. of right. movie cameras to to kind of. Sp- I guess it would really throw off your view of reality if every time you made a picture and you put it through the dark room and you pulled it out, it kind of looked like shit a little bit because you had all kinds of like weird shit you made the camera out of. Oh, he was definitely committed to the imperfections being the art. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then he's like, I, I took this picture. But that's the case with art. That's the case with his style of painting or most styles of art are, you know, how, how different it is from reality. I, well, I think it was Picasso who said uh, art is the, a lie that tells the truth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, I, so I think that that commitment to perfection is also like, you know, the maddening thing of uh, the, the words of Da Vinci, the, the final words of Da Vinci. Uh, I have offended God and mankind because my work did not live up to the level it should have. Yeah. Settle down. Damn. <laughs> All right. And also maybe imperfection is the That's entire tough. point. Yeah. Right? I mean, you can't if you if you're able to recreate reality, then you're God. Right. And then where's the creativity in just being another one <laughs> yeah, of those guys? Like, exactly. Right. He already did it once. Yeah. Or she or whatever. Yeah. So he's 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 basically going around doing this from the late 60s to 1985 and taking photographs up to 100 a day. 
And on these homemade cameras, which are again rubber bands, uh, no, actually, it's 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 the elastic from his underwear. <laughs> and is that like that's 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 the mechanism that's kind of moving the the film or the aperture? That's to like kind of the, the shutter, right? And then what you wind is a beer cap bottle, right? Straight, nice, straight up. Nice. And then it's this ground plexiglass with tooth, toothpaste and uh, and cigarette ashes and a cardboard tube. And uh, uh, so they'd be plywood, but there's, there's several cameras. And you can, you can see the pictures of these cameras. And he's able to get film, though. And he's able to get film, yeah. And film. <laughs> but with his appearance and everything, he's going around um, his town of Kaijov. And most people don't think this is a real camera at all. It, uh, it, it you know it, it's almost like uh, so the that, that cargo cult stuff. Like right. when you see like, you know, Islanders and they're... <laughs> Making fake, buttons. yeah. Like, oh, look how cute these guys are. Right. This guy's able to like, I'm a mat. I would imagine this guy's able to go into fucking like you know girls' locker rooms and he feels and nobody's paying attention. He's, he's, got, he's not even he's allowed. A, he's not even allowed at the pool. Right. Uh, he's not. Yeah, you stinks. Would. This smells. Uh, and and they think he's a creep and he has bad social standing. Don't forget. Um, so he goes around doing this, you know, for what is it? Must be 15 years and hundreds and hundreds of photographs. Homemade, all, all coming back, um, developed in a bucket put out on a clothesline and um you know then don't forget um th- there's rats in the house and now they're they're getting in on the act right they're taking pictures the rats are a a, a collaborator yeah in the, the art yeah, yeah so there's some stuff where you can see the rat involvement in, right. in how the picture was developed they made it a lot better yeah, yeah and uh yeah there's a dead rat in the bucket when i made this you know yeah. uh, scorsese always puts a rat in his films is that that's true right Maybe he got it from this fellow. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. It's it, yeah. It's it's it's. I mean, uh, it, it like the like the photographs are just on the floor. They're strewn around. It's a fucking mess. Um, and, and what uh, what are these photographs like? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, they're all uh, women in the town hmm. doing women any, anything. Yeah. Um, but it's just mostly ca- running away. The, <laughs> it, the stuff they were allowed to well, do. Well, no, some of them, some of them would turn and pose because they were like, "That's not a real camera." Mm-hmm. And oh. and so, but then it's also like him seriously behind the fence where he's not allowed of the pool, taking things through the fence. And so, you know, it has this like the, the alienation mm-hmm. is omnipresent in in the it's thing part of the art. because he's actually not allowed in yeah. a lot of places. Yeah, because he, don't forget he's tall. He's bedraggled. I mean, this is not your, you know, your favorite socialist utopia, right? He's not the example of that. He's like, I'm still here from the old world, and um, I uh, I want to take a little break, and we'll come right back, and I'll, I'll tell you more uh, about this, and we'll decide, you know, is it a dream deferred, or you know, is it uh, is uh, it pee in a cardboard birthday hat? Yeah, <laughs> who's and to say? Who's to say? We'll do the Pepsi challenge when we come back. We'll be right back. (laughs) And we're back. Chug it. You need two hands. (laughs) So... uh, (laughs) We uh oh yeah we should we should uh, say let's, let's plug our uh, shit. Please, please um uh, check us out. Profiles and interesting on Instagram, PP Podcast on Twitter, and lo- uh you know subscribe on Patreon. We do an extra episode a week. Yeah, we're gonna record one right after this. You yeah. Get some interaction. You get a little you get a little fuck extra. around. You get to hear Aaron, hear Aaron say uh Larry King's gonna die before he does. <laughs> yeah, yeah last, weeks before he does. Last episode we talked about uh, everything people had shoved in their asses last year, and we had a great discussion that uh, uh, everything uh, they got caught, everything got stuck. Uh, we agreed. They went to the ER. A great for. discussion about spiritual narcissism, mm-hmm. and uh, that's actually gonna factor in here uh, too a little bit in, in what I want to wrap this up with. Uh, but um, so Tiki is uh, he's he's. Going around his his hometown, living with his parents. He's a freak of the tiki, and he's uh he's taking pictures of women. Um, most of them don't know it. There's a lot of candids. Um, the ones that do don't think he's got any film in that fucking thing. It's like fucking. There's a toilet roll on the end of it. You know, right, right. he's got straight up the elastic from his underwear working the shutter. I mean, I I I barely know how cameras work today. I can only imagine people back then had no idea. Yeah. 
That even no, I think people to... back then were way more in tune with. I'm not saying that he, everybody, but you know, back in the day, people knew how to like. Oh, I know how to. I'm gonna. I I can pickle stuff, and I know how to do this. They, you know, they were more in tune with the with the recent invention of the camera. Maybe, yeah. but not maybe not the simplicity of. Listen, they, man, you, I can't you, build an iPhone. But you know, you can make it in a cardboard box. When no, they're not selling it in cardboard boxes. There's no cameras for sale in cardboard box. No, but like you know what they would do? You could you could you used to be able to like um Well this is the pinhole cameras. Yeah, the and, pinhole cameras. Same yeah. same thing. The same same thing, but you know, yeah. they send you a little kit and you fucking put it together and then you got a fucking pinhole camera. This guy's yeah. doing it it's with It's all about paper exposure. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean he's obviously having, you know, uh, something better than a pinhole camera. It's right. you know uh <laughs> it's, it's made out of toilet paper for all. Well, well, I mean, no, it's there's there's a few where you go like if it was like cleaned up a little bit yeah. and you stood a little far back you go like oh that looks like a camera <laughs> the elastic on the shutter has got some skid marks and then but otherwise you, it's pretty good but then when you get close it's like you see like oh the fucking the, the wheel is a goddamn the beer, beer bottle, bottle cap. cap is brilliant it is um i mean was that like some of his paintings before that where you're like oh yeah that's are you, is there a, what is this how'd you, oh, get, then, how'd you get that great shade of brown yeah <laughs> let me tell you <laughs> well i the, found the, it yeah <laughs> the thing is uh i call it brown number two <laughs> <laughs> yeah he, and, but he's he really leans hard into the thing of like it's you know it's not great art. Um, well, he seems to have definitely a confidence issue. Tony I, I, Stark made a camera better than this I, in I, a I, cave I, with a box of scraps. I would say I would say it's it's, it's a confidence uh, in being non-confident, like it's uh, confidently unconfident. Yeah, it's knowing that you know nothing and saying that it's not really um, brilliant art. It was this thing of him going like. Um, I'm just going to do it and I do it. And then kind of like living, uh, the art is really more the thing than the actual photographs to him. But people that would, that would discover, so the thing that happens is later on, he had a friend that was exiled in, uh, Switzerland and he comes back and he's tough. He he visits him and he sees the fucking photographs all over the ground and he's going like, the fuck man, these are fucking great. And he's like, he's never cataloged any of them. (laughs) They're just all over the ground (laughs) in his hovel. (laughs) Yeah, with the rats (laughs) running around. They're adding they're adding I'll make I'll make you some lunch and as they walk into the kitchen, there's just photographs all over the ground. Is that like it's it's and then the rats have the other side of the house. Yeah, and and also like when his parents die, like the neighbor becomes his guardian. Like this is not a guy that's like doing good at all. Self sufficient. And he's also uh, like so he's on a disability pension and his, his disability is basically uh, being a dissident like it's it's being crazy mm-hmm. um but also Both two different things for the record yes yes but uh, what being a dissident and being crazy but well who's to say is it is it the soviet state it, and for him it was kind of that where it could go- be both i mean it seems like it's both it seems it, it's not just that he's a totally sane on the level dissident it seems like he's a guy who's got issues mm-hmm. and cannot comply. Right. And also, where did the issues arise? Was it his imprisonment for eight years? Certainly possible. Is it the multiple uh, visits to the state right. psychiatric facility? Yes. They, and, they and don't, so, they're not conducive to mental health. So there's this yes. whole there's this whole kind of like underlying theme in the work, despite its <laughs> its thing of, uh, of perversion and stuff like that. But um, a lot of people, a lot of people would, would blow it off as like, this guy's just a pervert. But a lot of the things are just candid, mundane things that women are doing. And I think it's showing a lot of people would say uh, in reply that he is alienated and ostracized from society. And then he never even has the dream of being romantically with a woman because he's just this crazy fucking dissident. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Um, So that's the dream deferred. The dream of of being a a classic modern artist before the invasion is deferred. Um, And then is it art or is it perversion um, he does have like a telescopic lens. He's getting into the pool without getting into the pool. Um, there is a lot of, but there's not like there's not like a like a rake of nudes. It's not like peeping tom photography. A lot of it is just beauty in the moment of somebody doing something and not knowing they're being seen. Right, right. It was you know it's regular life. I think for, for photographs like that tend to um, when they're contemporary, it's it's just commonplace. But then you you take you go 10, 15, 20 years, 30 years from there, mm-hmm. and there's a real beauty in them because it's evidence of life and how people lived. Yes. And then it becomes much more uh, human and, and, and alive than if it was just a thing people, people saw all the time. So, so that's the kind of thing here was that, you know, people 
that really got into Tiki as a photographer, part of it is the story, right? Mm -hmm. Part of it is the profile. Mm -hmm. And the profile... Yeah, the collection. The, re the discography. Well, not the discography. And well, yeah, the portfolio. It, it is, and the, the, and the guy that doesn't yeah. care about it. Right. The guy that's not trying to have anybody see it. Because it's not until his friend, um, who's a gentleman by the name of Buxbaum, he comes back after being exiled in... in um, Switzerland? In Switzerland. And he sees all this stuff... And he's just like, this is all great. And then he's he's talking about it, and he gives it to him, and he's like, you stopped? And he's like, yeah, I stopped like in 85 or whatever. I ran out of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, I, think, I think he seemed to like be like, I met the numbers I wanted to do um, for this, like because he'd be like, I want to do this many per day, and then I want to do this many per day, and stuff like that. And um, he has quotes where he says things like, what is the highest number? What's the lowest number? And I think he got caught up in like that kind of shit. Yeah. And then he just goes, no, none of that anymore. And um, also, don't forget now the Iron Curtain like is kind of like going back and stuff. So I think it was, it was seeming to be a very um, just fuck you thing to do. And also, um, probably the state and his his state parents and his actual parents are like, I'm just happy he's doing something. Like I don't care what he's sure. doing. And also, it looks like. He's just a guy playing with his own shit. <laughs> he looks, he's, he's developing in a bucket. He's throwing them on, up on a clothesline. He's not cataloging them. Um, you know, the, the rats are coming through the house. Um, sometimes he, he would have to, to build, like, baskets out of steel to keep the rats from eating through them. Uh, he, he won't eat meat. Um, and, but he also bitches about the rats eating all of his rice and flour. And he's like, I eat what they don't eat. <laughs> right? It's a real mess. It's a real fucking mess. And um, he's just chilling, uh, drinking that good, really cheap Czech piss um, mm. at the bar. And so he's just kind of like, you know, like, it's like, is he an artist or is he just a fucking maniac? Like, is he a pervert or is it art? Um, and it all really rides both. the line very finely. And But he's, the one thing I do really love about him as a character is he is entirely adverse to claiming any credit for doing anything good whatsoever. Mm. <laughs> and for a guy that has been told he's shit his whole life, it's, it, I, I, I just love it. Like, uh, when, when he, cause then these, these photographs get out to the art world. Um, and then it's like, here's a show in Hong Kong. Here, God, here's a, fucking hate here's that. a show in Tokyo. Here's an exhibition in London, New York, Zurich, and on and on and on throughout the world. Um, solo shows. He will not go to any of them. <laughs> and he goes, um, when he's asked about it, he goes, do you, do you want to know how to be famous? He goes, be the worst in the world at something. Well, yeah, that's one way to do it. And he goes, but it's not like, I mean, this is not a guy making the room. Mm -hmm. This is a guy just doing something, not caring if anybody sees it. Right. And I think really only... Um, considering it art in the moment he's doing it, and um, he he's he has this kind of opinion shared by Nick Cave. Nick Cave has like a dozen of his photographs, and he goes, "They're the most beautiful things I own." Mm -hmm. And he wrote a song about him called "The Collector." And uh, uh, he talks about this guy wandering around town, you know, as as this this kind of uh, you know homeless weirdo, and um, you're. You know, Ch Charles Baudelaire, right? Charles Baudelaire had this quote where he says, like, that's almost the role of artist is to, to dawdle around as the unseen mm -hmm. person and just take in the world. And a shit and, out gold. And reflect it. Yeah. And, I, you know, it's, it, this, that's exactly what this guy did. And um, he, uh, he, ne he, never, he never did it for love. And when he got love, he rejected it. Mm -hmm. And it's just so fucking fascinating to me, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I'm 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 so like intrigued, because um, because then even later, like when you know his friend Buxbaum was is getting him like this international acclaim, he's he's like, oh, I didn't even give him permission to do all this. He's like, right. He was just going like, yeah, if you want to, I don't care, take it out of here. Like, um, but but he he almost resents being said that it's anything. So it's one of those things. Where I feel like it goes back to the to, to the spiritual narcissism thing, where he goes like, "That was just me doing it. It was just me liking doing it, and I don't want any martyrdom over it. That was just me making art because, um, th that's what's to be done. And 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 also like even he's he's questioning what is art, 
So your connection to the spiritual narcissism thing is that he did it as a purely selfish act? He was saying, yes, this is what I do. It's not for the good of anything other than me enjoying it while I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. And Nick Cave has this quote where he talks about, where he goes, um, the way he approaches that is very much the way I feel when a song is recorded. And I, I personally have felt this way, where I'm like, once it's, you know, it's in your head, and then you get to figure it out on an instrument, and then you practice it, and then you get to record it. And once it's recorded, you go like, well, now that's that piece is done. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the art is over. And for him, it's like, I'm not going to look at this photograph and be like, oh, this is so great. He goes, it was me ma taking the photograph, developing it, and then like that was that was it. He's like, the moment when I took the photograph that was, the was when I got the gratification. But I think with music, and then maybe this is a little bit of sidetrack, the music, it's, I don't think it's over because there's live performance. No, yeah. Afterward, and you sure, can, it's something sure. you can reinterpret. And re I mean, every time... That's you true. Know, that's true. Fuck, every turd G.G. Allen eats on stage is a new performance. <laughs> right, exactly. You right. know, or you know, whatever. You, Stones do Gimme Shelter every time. It's a different, yeah. it's a different thing with different contexts and different whatever. Um, but yes, you know, especially with photography or, or doing a painting, it's, you know, it's done. Yeah. But then, you know, what what changes is 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 the audience and the context and, context and the interpretation, you know? Yeah. Oh, I, th um, I think uh, so... I'm 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 trying to work on like a, you know writing like story writing and I'm I was reading about it and they were you know someone was saying like you write like if you were writing to a friend do like you because the idea of 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 making like a painting or a picture for, for the masses and yeah. taking it and being like I, as you're taking it going I I wonder what people will think about this yeah like that that's an insane person you can't actually well, create Andy something. Warhol. I mean, kind of, but maybe in those moments that he was making them, he was actually, you know, disengaging from that type of, what is that, id or, you know, some type of mindset of thinking about what people will think about with the thing you're right. currently Super making. Super ego, yeah. It's this, it's, it's not creative. It's, mm. it's like this desperate appeal for likability and there's actually, there's no... But that's exactly posting on the internet. But but you but you can be creative in the way you do yeah. that. Exactly. It's every selfie on Instagram. Right. But... It's, it's, you know, he's not thinking of it as art. He's saying, these are pictures I took because I wanted to take. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean other people can't think of it as art. I can understand right. why he wouldn't want them to, because that's yeah. not what he thinks Yeah, about it's it. not up for him to decide. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I, th I think he understands that, and I think that's part of the reason why, you know, he goes ahead and lets everything happen. Um, but it, it, it's a thing where um, I think he doesn't want uh, the narrative controlled. And I think he wants control of the narrative, and I think that is... <laughs> good, good luck. <laughs> but that's his right. The it narrative is. of what? Of the intention of the work. Oh, okay. Um, and he's... He, he, does, he, he, does he just... Does he not want... Or does he just not want them to control it? He wants to, he wants to be, have the final say, and I think that's that, completely was it for fair. Anybody, was he, did he ever intend for anybody to see it? Obviously not. They're on the floor. Right. So what he's upset about is that other people, it's not that he wants to no, control no, the it, narrative. No, no, this went on for a few years, don't forget, where he had no problem with all those things happening. And I'm sure he reaped some benefits mm. of it um, uh, financially and otherwise, but I think he was just kind of like, um, let's, let's not let what I did here get some other kind of narrative of what I meant to do because right. almost what I what meant to do was nothing other than what I wanted but to. But isn't that art? I mean, like, listen, man, you can fucking read Shakespeare and interpret a hundred million things of it and right. it has nothing to do with what he meant. Sure. You know, you can watch a good movie. I mean, you can watch a fucking superhero movie and digest a million things out of there that were never in the artist's yeah. intention. That's yeah. what art is. It's sure. up for interpretation. If you want to control the narrative, then it just can't get out. Like, you have to control right. every single part of the yeah. process of it. Look, yeah. man, you know who's the ultimate failure at writing a narrative and failing to control that narrative and how it spreads? God. Yeah. <laughs> he gave a narrative and people fuck. If God can't do it, if God can't control how his narrative is interpreted, fucking uh, uh, cardboard Rasputin isn't going to be able to do it either. You yeah, know? and also part of the thing there too, not to get too fucking like, Lofty with it is the narrative is is 
is part of the art, especially yeah. especially with him. Like I said, the, with the profile yeah. is is part of the art because that's like the beauty people see in it, where they go like, okay, he doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't, you know, the the camera sucks. Smells like his balls, right? You know, um, he's, I like he's it. Going around. <laughs> uh, I mean, the lens is as fucked up as he uh, is. Yeah, you know, I'm, not, like, I'm not allowed in the pool, but yeah, I'm still taking pictures. I guess I'm gonna picture you and rub it against my undies. You know, you know? why you're not allowed in the pool? Because you'd show up here with a cardboard camera and take pictures of people. Uh, yeah, uh, the kids were scared of him. Uh, there's, yeah, there's oh, a guy, they're always really? scared. So there's a guy. Um, uh, there's a short documentary made about him called uh, Tarzan Revisited. You can see it on YouTube. Why is it called Tarzan? Excuse me, tar- Tarzan retired because um, he goes uh, in the documentary. He says at one point he goes, "People would say, what are you, a painter, a photographer?" And he goes, "I'm nothing. I'm Tarzan retired." Um, and uh, <laughs> so, so the whole like thing, that. the whole like sheer nihilism of it, I am not. Of course, is is seemingly part of the narrative, where even if he's acting like it's it's just his say, he knows it's going to be remembered. He's now fucking a world famous artist. So uh, almost refuting claims to be an artist is part of the art. inherently part of the art, right? Well, by by taking pictures, he has created a narrative. He has cre- like he has yeah. He can't be forgotten because he has a fi- he has fixed the past into a uh, frame. Yeah, and he cannot be forgotten because he has literally printed the past into a, a moment that he right, but with. never cataloged it, never tried to take care of it. Sure, but uh, when you take that many... But it, it sounds like, you know, it's just one of those things where it sounds like, um, you know, if not for this guy coming back from Switzerland, n- I mean, nothing happens. It's, right, ju- well, it's just a crazy right, old depends man. depends on who finds the house whenever he dies in it. Right. Um, but I think, you know, the whole thing was kind of filtered through that lens of... Sure, sure. Uh, at first it was uh, definitely, you know, uh, Iron Curtain... Type of thing of like, oh, there's, he's behind the fence at the pool. It's like he's not allowed in the pool. <laughs> he's a, he's a fucking, you know, psycho. To, and also he's hammered, right? He's always drinking like cheap check piss, right? He's in the bar all the time, um, and you know, during during you know the Soviet thing, like they have him on this pension, just be like, all right, we'll take care of you, but just stay out of it, right? It would be worse to have him in a factory, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Right, right. And he, they're thinking they're like, just keep him with his parents. He would cost parents. more money if they didn't pay him that. Yeah. yeah. Um. So they keep him out of the way, and it, it just you know it's this huge thing of like alienation, and um, you know what does happen to this guy if if there's no Soviet invasion, right? Mm-hmm. What do you think? I mean, is it is this what made him an artist? You know, well, I mean, you know, what happens? You know, like you're saying, eight years. Uh, and you know what was the what were the the policies? What was the therapy back then? Shock treatment, fucking beatings. Oh no! I mean, this is this hanging was, upside down. This was a normalization d- d- treatment. It was it was okay. like look at the other people, try to be like them. Right. <laughs> you know, it was that sort of okay, thing. Okay, okay. And definitely, also normalization means normal by the state's standard. Sure, but normalization can sometimes mean you're kind of acting crazy. We'll shock you with some electricity. So that way you're you're pretty docile. Yeah, it might have been. I mean, I mean, I know that um, there's a point in the documentary where he's laughing and he's going like, "I was um, there was some you know thing about like whether you know to to kind of take care of me and then I started a fight and I, I ripped off uh, <laughs> the police chief's uniform or sleeve or something," and he goes, "And then everybody let me go because they didn't didn't want to admit that yeah, I, I, I I scrapped him good," and so he's like, "And then they kind of left me alone." So he's like, "The whole thing is about keeping up appearances." Mm. And, um, I mean, the, the, the question is, you know, wh- what is the dream? Was it always painting? What is, was well, he the, the, definitely the allowance to, to do art? I think in a, in a free thing where they're not telling you to draw hot guys in fucking overalls. Sure. Sure. That's Aaron's job. <laughs> I'm the guy in the overalls. Yeah. And you know, he's still self portrait. <laughs> it's gay as fuck. Night. <laughs> oh, and, <wow>. uh, <laughs> super well, Mario I mean, brothers. The thing is, I think to, to, to like, <laughs> And then don't forget, you now he's a fucking he's ostracized from society, so there is no but the guy, the hope guy, of a woman, and all he's taking pictures. There's a of, sense of one. There's <laughs> that, that's actually his that underwear. Is his own, it might be his own balls. Yeah, <laughs> but like you know, it's to to kind of say what if is uh, Marvel? What if coming out this summer on Disney Plus? <laughs> but like, it's like saying, oh man, what if Mozart was born before the fucking piano was invented? Well, this guy was, you know, the guy was an artist before his trauma. Sure. Or what we can, what, what we're going to label his trauma yeah, of yeah, being yeah. imprisoned and reprogrammed or whatever. Like the spark was there, right? Sure. 
And and then uh, Disney Soul also on Disney Plus. Nice. And Pixar is cool. You know, the spark the, of inspiration was there before he was considered a dissident and tried to be reprogrammed. Like he was clearly a creative person, creative soul. Yeah. They just removed his. I mean, did they remove paint from him? Could he no longer get paint? Oh no! But he he said he said uh, he had decided to give up on that in uh... right. But then he just you know well now I'm gonna. He said he said all the pictures have been painted. Okay, so yeah, so he like, that wasn't that was a choice. He decided yeah. he he and didn't may- fight it. Sound right. like it? He maybe- didn't waste it, and he tasted yeah. it. Yeah, I mean right. maybe maybe he's just saying that it's like. Um, so but I- having to lean into, or he doesn't have to lean into, it, but he chooses to lean into the I am uh, not the same as you kind of thing, and whether you like it or not, mm. and that it's it's a weird thing where it kind of keeps up even in the art world mm. where afterward he's going, I am not like you still. And that means I don't want to make money. I just want this check piss. And I want to have the rice that my rats don't eat. <laughs> you know? And it's really fucking weird. Mm-hmm. But I kind of love it. But also, yeah. it's a routine. I mean, he's probably been doing that for decades. Right. He, he's he probably, probably knows. too afraid to do anything else. Yeah. And not only that, he kind of like espouses things. Like, they're like, he's like, does anything bring you, like, they're talking about, like, does anything bring you pleasure? And he goes, like, I don't even believe in pleasure. He's like, you know, what? Uh, it sounds like they reprogrammed him good. <laughs> I think he kind of reprogrammed himself, and and uh, um, that's kind of the coolest thing about it is it's a total rewrite that is completely his own, and it doesn't have any place in post or pre uh, or or contemporary Soviet Czechoslovakia. Well, do I mean listen? If you're gonna say that. The the interference of the state in his artistic life was important. Then you have to admit that it, it should also have been important in the way he viewed the world. Oh, absolutely. That's what I'm so, saying. I thought I, I, it feels like you're saying something completely opposite. I don't think he just came up with the idea that pleasure doesn't exist. Like I think him getting ground to a pulp by the state informed that decision. Of course it did. Yeah. Oh, okay. It seemed like you were saying. Totally oh, no, 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 not at all. Not at all. I, mean, I think, if anything, the entire thing was born about uh, by, you know, this, like, it fucking extremely fucked up thing happening. He probably would just another fucking, you know, boring-ass modernist painter. Um, or or maybe, or, but or, or incredible, who but, knows? Right, but also there's things that are lost with that, and that is the dream deferred. Um, there's a thing of going, like, you know, what would have happened? You know, would I have been maybe more of a bland artist or a less challenging artist, but maybe I could have had a fucking girlfriend. Right. You know, I, I, is the, was he happy in the sense of happiness that he sought? Was he fulfilled in the, in his artistic ambitions? Like what did he feel like he accomplished whatever he thought he wanted to do? You know, there's, uh, it's like you know, th- like ideas like that where I'm like, like you know, so what did he, did was he okay with it? It sounds like he was kind of okay with it, but was that because he well, didn't uh, have a choice? You know, or? If he was in the if he if he was in like mo- now the United States, right. he wouldn't have the luxury of being fucking taken care of. No, and, well, sure, yeah, and so he would probably be a terrorist. <laughs> but you know, they kept him fed, mm-hmm. yeah, and, and the rats in his house. You know he had. Yeah, it's not. It's he, had not the, he had the blessing and the burden of being on the dole. Not only that, it's it's really that it's his parents taking care of him, and like I said in later years, the neighbor lady is like right. the one that's like his legal guardian, right? And the grown ass man, legal, meaning that she was being subsidized by the state as well to help help with his care. Sure. So I'm saying that's a blessing and a burden for mm-hmm. everyone involved, right? Uh, it. It 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 keeps you around, but also like you know he's not going to do much more else also because he was also totally traumatized by the state. Yeah. Um. But he still had an. He, there was a spark there that still needed to participate. Now, is it weird? Is it abnormal yeah. to go around photographing ladies without their no? Yeah, that's not good. Who's to say? <laughs> the government does it all the time. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. Government takes pictures of you which when you're at the ATM. When you they, they call me life. doing some weird stuff. <laughs> There's, I mean, you should who, see the pictures of me. Who's the pervert? Who's the pervert? Right. Me? Yeah. No, Uncle Sam. <laughs> yeah. Pervy Uncle Sam is the pervert. Big bruv. Big bruva. Big bruv. Oh, big brother. NSA. Oh, big brother. But yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot. Of, you know. Uh, People that really do see the artistic value in, in his work when they just go like, it's not 
like it's just it's just not pornographic. You can just see that there's something like mysterious. Por- uh, pornography also, I mean, eye of the beholder, sure, right. And even though pornography means you know obscene imagery without artistic merit, you can have artistic porn. Oh yeah. Uh, but then also art changes depending on the context. Like hell, I do it all the time. You know, yeah. Th- there are things <laughs> on this show. You know, when when you go in the cave, cert- let's say that there's certain cave drawings or whatever. Like- oh, like with big jugs and stuff. Is that what you're gonna say? You're going to call them heavy hangers, I guess. <laughs> taters. Taters, you so, sicko. Well, some, th- oh, some cave guy's like, check these out, bro. No, that's not. I, I, this I, is I, what she was like. you never seen anything like it. I I'm miss the you. antelope hump. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking sick. Cave people were civilized. <laughs> what I'm they saying, had jobs. They were not doing it for pornographic purposes. They were for, you know, ritual or divination or... They were to they appeal the to. The, You're telling me there wasn't cavemen that was like, "Yo, she was stacked like this, bro." <laughs> or part of the ritual wasn't jacking off. I mean, they were all stacked like that. Oh my god, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at the drawings. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's right there. Inside. What I'm saying is, they become art now. Right. They weren't made to be pieces of art then. They were. Well, it's like they was, were appeal. They were. Uh, the you know they were they were offerings to the gods. Well, that's right? why, like I was saying about the contemporary pictures, it's they were just pictures of what was happening at the time. But then. they're art to us now. Exactly. Right, because they're a window into one man's psyche. Sure. They're a window into a, a, a communist society's psyche. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. the the guy, the man, is a projection of that society. Yes, and the sure, art yeah, is a projection good. of that man okay, within so, that society. So that's what I'm saying. So that that part of it, do you do you think it is just a guy like aspiring from behind a camera for? You know, the companionship he could have had if he wasn't such a pain in the ass artist. Sometimes, yes, and it's art. Sure, yeah. Is the power of the will? A well-made movie. Oh, are you talking about Lenny Riefenstahl? Mm-hmm. Um, Triumph of the Will. Triumph of the Will. Uh, I haven't seen it. Um, I know you watch it every day. I got it on yeah, repeat. It's, it's constantly <laughs> playing on my ceiling when I go yeah, to Yeah, you get the special features and the commentary, yeah, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, just, I don't like it because she's a woman, though. <laughs> it's very right. consistent. It's good. Very good. Very good. Um, yeah. I, it, no, I think most people agree it is. And that's why also she was hired because... You know, Baby Adolf was a fucking um, supposed artist. And, um, yeah, I think... You can have good art that is, you know, a, a projection of the society from which it came, right? Like, Yeah. Uh, oh, and also there's just... Or, or you have now to, art because of it. And you have to admit that some things ride the line into just fucking bad fucking porn mm-hmm. and, you know, art. Um, yeah. Well, and, the majority of those pictures sucked, but I'm guessing there was enough... That you're like, hey, this is as a, a good collection, shot. This is and as a collection, it works. Maybe, maybe when he took the picture, he was thinking, "Wow, this is a great picture." Maybe when he took the picture, he was thinking, "Wow, something's going on down in my where my balls are." Mm-hmm. You, uh, you know, know, there are probably there are chapters of Ulysses that uh, that suck, but Ulysses <laughs> is a great work of art, <laughs> right? Sure, right. And, and that's all right. And then there's a thing too that so when you think about this, is there like this thing of of the dissident going around shooting people in that way? Is there a thing where it's going like I I am re- I, I am crushing your head? <laughs> yeah. Is it, is, it, is, it, is it a guy going like I am rejecting you? You are now I, my I am your soul is mine. <laughs> <laughs> your image is against my rubber band from my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> You're in oh, my pants. Man, I'll show these fucking bitches. I, oh, God. I mean, oh, God. is there? But you know, <laughs> it's it's up to us to determine if that's out or not. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, obviously, right, right, right. You know, like I'm saying, show after show after show was just like these things have real aesthetic value. And, of course, part of it is the story behind it. And a lot of it is also the grime it comes out of. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to romanticize that more. Right. Um, th- there is, a, in the documentary, uh, Tarzan Retired, there's a, a guy that grows up and he's got a fucking huge, you know, fucking the biggest camera on earth with, like, oh, okay. the best lens. You know, and um, he's going like, yeah, I remember him from when I was a kid. We were scared of him, you know, and he's like, and now I see his work and I'm just like, I I really admire what he did, mm. you know, and uh, so even, you know, people from within that world are kind of remorseful about how they viewed and treated him. Uh, he was definitely, you know, um, viewed with pity and revulsion for sure, and I don't think he leaned into it like in like a uh, beat me piss on me you know kind of way mm-hmm. but he was fine with staying there um and mm. 
it's uh, I, I just I just don't know really what to make of it. Is he just kind of a homeless psycho, or is he you know a great artist? That he, I mean, but who's to say? But also, like, why does why does it have to be one or the other? Right, right, right. I mean, I think. Dude, I mean, uh, what the fucking the cynic. Well, don't get impatient uh, with the questions. Just no, meditate them. No, no, I'm, I'm, you know, trying to relax. For uh, have you considered relaxing? Calm, calmer than you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, God, who was the cynic philosopher from ancient Greece? Um, fuck, I forgot it. The the listeners. Oh, were. Plato. No, Pl- Plato. Pl- Plato. Plato. <laughs> yeah, uh, Socrates. He does. He does actually mention Plato at some point in the documentary, and 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 saying like the thing about reality being a reflection, and not being able to see actual reality, and oh, like allegory of the cave. He and he, yeah. He says you know like he's, um, yeah. It's uh, the ocean isn't blue. It's fucking reflecting the sky, like right. that sort of thing. Diogenes or Diogenes, he was a phys- a cynic philosopher from Greece. Mm-hmm. It's all he, shit. He lived in an overturned <laughs> Greece more like gross. An overturned wine barrel and would just eat onions and yeah. like a fucking pet three-legged He's dog. He's like a hermit crab like, but like he was he spitting like out his way brilliant. into it. Right. But yeah, he was also a homeless crazy person living in a barrel. Yeah. Underneath a bridge. Yeah. But also was spitting out like mad real philosophy. Right. Yeah. Well, there's this part of the thing of like, I wouldn't be a part of any club that would have me as a member, right? It's right. That, that if I'm, the and, Marx Brothers and, were our players. And, 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 you know, if, if art is a reflection, not just of society, but of the person in that society and, and, and them reflecting on it, that's a unique perspective you're only going to get from that guy. Right. Only that guy is going to be able to make that art. Right. Which is fart. Plus, I fart. Plus, I farted. <laughs> it's like a. It was a dream deferred. Like, what happened to his dream? Well, it's, it sounds more like a, a fester in the sun. He didn't really explode. He kind of more festered in the sun. It definitely sun. did not explode. Yeah. His fame exploded for real. Sure, sure, I sure. Mean, but, but, you know, some of that is like. Uh, it's like this, it's this combination of his story. And also pictures from behind the Iron Curtain. That's like, what What did people do behind the Iron Curtain? Well, it was like mostly just like normal stuff, but there was more concrete or something. Yeah. You know, it's like... It, and that's part of it too, right? So that's the thing. is like when, when the fame explodes is is part of the thing of like controlling the narrative because like it's what people foist upon it. Yeah. You know? Is it being like, oh, you're all into this because you think it's this and I'm saying, no, it's not that at all. I'm saying... You know, I fucking like the rats in my house. Uh, you know, I'm. Yeah, I'm, imagine how Jesus feels. Uh, sure, yeah. Well, people getting carried. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> the no with the money changers and the shit fuck. <laughs> I didn't say anything about this. The fuck. <laughs> I didn't say, I never mentioned hell once. Yeah. <laughs> he said, he says, he just completely like is so self deprecating. He goes like, He's like, well, if you want to make photographs like this, he goes, you got to start with a really bad camera, <laughs> right? Sure. And sure. he's like, you know. You got to start with a bad childhood. If you want to be famous, be the worst in the world at what you do with something. Yeah. And Yeah, that's one way to do it. It's like, I need, it's, that's what but, worked for him. But it's people saying, oh, no, this is great. And he's saying, like, no, this is terrible. I mean, we've, we've talked about what? The, the, um, the William s- Hung. We've talked about, like, really bad music. Hung um, Will. Like, what was it? The, the, the... The slats, the Cherry Sisters. The, well, there was the Cherry Sisters, right? Right. They were and then great. there was the um, the doing great. that band from uh, was it Vermont, New Hampshire? Hey, hey, hey! I am looking something up for this. Okay. Uh, the the sisters who were who never played music before. Oh yes, yes. Uh, Kirk Cobain was into. Yes. Um, I yes. thought those were the Cherry Sisters. No, no Cherry no, Sisters no, is the one that I did with the Vaudeville Act. <sighs> Yeah, this was a, a Patreon episode about uh, really uh, weird music, and yeah, I mean, they, they, you know, there, there, Zappa said they were one of his favorite band, and it was, uh, I want to say it's like the Skags. I can't fucking remember. It's too many, too much. There's too much info. I know too much. Uh, it, it just there is something interesting in seeing bad uh, have the echoes of what we know as quality art. Right. Well, it's bad in its time, and then you know it goes on, and you're like, "Oh no, that's fucking amazing." Well, there's right. like, it's, there's it's, also it's, like schlock, like it, it's you kind know of, bad, like you know, uh, good uh, bad trauma Trump, films. Yeah, Trump, the, right. the Toxic Avenger, sure, bad movie, right, pretty good. Right, right. But this this was something no, that people, you know, it's bad, like crazy noise punk shit that is just bad. But it also for it's not, some it's, reason, it's, it's not trying. Good. 
Like there's like the like the Zucker Brothers for the next media episode. I'll play this clip from like the Zucker Brothers nine eleven comedy, uh, which is trying to be good, but is really really but bad. That I, that I think is the thing is that like it's really that it's when you show that somebody wasn't trying to right. get anything out of the art at all, it immediately gets enhanced in the eyes of the audience. Yes, exactly. If it can be proven that it's authentic, the shag. If it's right. the shags. If it's they they, 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 they they wow, this is pure. He really didn't give a shit. Right. Yeah, I mean, every every fucking artist any, anybody gets into, they're like, this guy's fucking, he's nuts, man. He's totally off the grid, you know? And they want that to be true, so then there's people that will kind of pretend to be that way. But there are actually people that are that way and really do things and have a unique perspective because they truly actually do not give a fuck. Right. Right. It, you know, they're, I'm thinking of two different stories here, but they're both kind of their same thing. One is uh, Sokolsky, mm -hmm. and then the other is Banksy. Right. Part of Banksy's art is the idea of Banksy. the fame. Yeah. The non-fame. Right. It's just Banksy. Right. It's, it's fame as a brand and not a human. Right. Yeah. And then the great documentary exit. Uh, exit of the gift shop. <laughs> yeah, a very insufferable. Which becomes uh, a whole other thing. main character. Yeah. yeah. But like. Oh, know. and that's someone uh, a patriot without a country, and right. <laughs> Exit through the gift shop? The no, 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 no. The Sukolsky one. Who's the? Oh yes, Sukolsky is the other guy. Sukolsky was the guy who who kind of like uh, showed great promise as an artist as a young man. Went to, uh, you know, the best art school in Europe, and then the wars happened and coming, and then like most of his shit just got burned. Right. But he had moved to the United States, and there were just there were some remaining pieces of art and books of his art, and, um, it's a. Uh, it's just it, he just he just kept doing it. It was a totally new style of art that he was doing, knowing that nobody was ever going to see it. Yeah, and it still maintained. But then it was all found, right? And then you just it's un, it's an undeniable just like yeah. And that's the thing too. So that's the thing and, that's so interesting to me about um, Banksy's doing it, knowing that everyone's going to see it. Yeah, and there's no face that there's no face to the artist. Right. And then there's Sikulski doing it. And nobody's going to see it, but you know the guy. Right. And that guy, I mean, the fucking documentary about him is called Struggle. Right. His most famous work is cards called Struggle. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's interesting, the these different shades of, of art. Because, uh, well, you know, because there's the Banksy, you don't know who this guy is, and that, that helps it. But even even then, like, all of his uh, murals and his, his graffiti, quote-unquote, is kind of like it's an idea flipped on its head. It's, mm -hmm. you know, something, here's a pretty idea with some, with the reality of, mm -hmm. of some destructive. I mean, one of, I, he, he plays with form. I mean, he plays with the idea of art. There was one of his pieces of art that he had was it. bought at auction. Yeah. And right, when I mean, the gavel hit, the, the frame of the painting was actually a paper shredder. Yeah. yeah. And, then it and so when it was sold for fucking God knows how many figures, it just went through the shredder of the frame. And that right. itself is, you know. That itself is probably now worth more. Tri triple, tripled it in value. Must have been. The, the, the paper shreds must be. Yeah. It, it's such a troll on a troll on a troll that you really kind of have to admire that. Right. And in the shades of art, right? You know, you could you could make some chart, and then like at one end is Jeff Koons, who knows exactly what he's doing, making like the most pop bullshit. Mm -hmm. Just this sucks, and I'm just gonna make money off it. And then there's Piss Christ. And then there's this, and you know, it, it, do you remember the profile about Robert Lenkowitz? Yeah, yeah, the, uh, uh, counterfeiter. No, 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 that's Boggs. But Boggs, is, you know, Wade, also uh, someone, yeah, you know, Boggs. right? Like you make, you know, on this whole on this whole spectrum, Boggs is on this thing where he's not doing it for art. He's literally drawing art to, to spend to, to to trade to barter. Yeah. And uh, Lenkowitz, uh, he did the really beautiful paintings, but of all like the the vagrants in his town, right? And they lived with him, and right, and so also he wasn't doing like you know in the same sense as this, he's not doing that to be famous. Mm -hmm. or get rich from it but also the you know it's very it's like really the paintings are beautiful and really good yeah and it's so like he then he's so somewhere here on the spectrum and then you have this guy sure. who's taking pictures that he doesn't think is art and he's not doing it to make art but it is art and but he is doing it for a reason yes and it's i think it's just it's really the act of doing it yeah I think it's 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 uh and, and is that the most pure art there is? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's he, you know, and he's saying you know like fucking this is this is uh 
it, it takes me back to being there, right? And so I can look at any one of these and be like, oh, yeah, fucking like, uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's kind of a... He's momentoing himself. Well, and it's also, mm. you know, if you take 100 pictures a day, do you ever really lose track of time? Yes, and that, while you're doing it. Yeah, yeah, in that moment. Except that you have all the things to bring you back to all those well, days. Sure, but sure. The, the time, the, you are losing track of time. But you can always revisit it. In the moment. Right. You're not, because you're not there. You're only there when you look back on it. I mean, the shutter clicks, and that when the shutter clicks, it's black. Right. But if you're saying you felt the art the most in the moment that you took it. Well, and and art then, is getting lost. You're in that flow state where time right. doesn't. Time. Well, don't forget then. So then he's going home, like to the to the dirty old bucket, right? This rat, rat swimming around, loving it. You know, they're you cooking know. up French cuisine. In, yeah. the, in the Disney movie, yeah, they're making. We're out of they're, flour. They're, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bum. No one talks about the pies he ate. <laughs> and rice. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, so then it's you know all right. Here's that moment I was in, um, and uh, now I get the evidence of, of how it comes out, right, from what I saw. And it's, and then it's done. I think it's it's that. It's like once it's fully realized, like Nick Cave said, it's completely done. Do you think that's what bothered him so much about the exhibitions was that... These were my moments. No, when, when, that it was over. It, it was over when no, he no, finished he the pictures, just, he and did, now it's, that but, was a, but don't now forget, it's again. He also decided he was over it like in 85. He just stopped. You know, no, but I mean, but like I mean, the, the, the moment of the art, yeah, being is, over once he sees it, yeah, and now all of a sudden the pictures are in a gallery and people are telling him, it, and now it's still going, and he's yeah. like, "Fuck, I, I don't want to relive every single moment." Yeah, I already did that. Oh, no, well, I, I think it's yeah, and also these are mine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get out of my well, house. Oh well, yeah, I and mean, you're not getting it exactly. <laughs> if you want the art, watch my reaction to you watching the picture. Only yeah. the rats. The get art to see is this. what how I yeah. It um, he was he was still uh, you know part, sounds like a pain in the ass. Oh, he's yeah. definitely a huge pain in the ass. That's why I love him. Um, that makes sense. That's why you love him. <laughs> yes. That's why I love both of you fucking idiots. Um, I, I, yeah, I think, um, I think he just, the only thing he doesn't, he has a problem with is somebody throwing um, some kind of narrative on what his intentions are and what his belief in the work is because he maintains that it is absolutely nothing. And it's not to say he's without ideas, like in the documentary, which it's on YouTube. You can see it. Tarzan uh, retired. And, uh, you know, he's just sitting around drinking beer, talking to this guy. And, and the guy's talking like, oh, you fucking made this camera out of a uh, fucking bottle cap. And he's like, I don't even give a shit. <laughs> he's like, uh, who cares? He's <laughs> actually like, like, well, all right, well, we're doing a documentary. Yeah, can can a, you be cool? Can you just, I don't know, like. But then, who cares? Well, obviously, you made it. You cared in the moment. Stop being a dick right now. But he's but. saying, like, I'm past it, and I kind of get that, too. Sure. Um, or he's just like, you know, um, everybody, like, Chris Burden was like, my favorite piece, the, the one I'm working on. Ideally. That was the way, you know, and that's, that's I think a, good way of, a lot of them that's feel. That's a good way. Of yeah, a lot of people don't want to look back on their shit and wax on it and be like, you know, that was really dope. You know, uh, a lot of them do too. <laughs> sure. And, and anytime I think back to like a good setup, like or a, a good, I'm like, this is really good. I'm like, fuck, man, I, f I feel like an insane person. Yeah. Just like stuck in this moment where I was like, things were great, and I still got it. And then it's like, no, well, what, what the fuck now? Right. It's a lot. Of, it's very. It's very nice to be reminded of things that were good. Yeah. <laughs> and so, do you think the the like the the absolute reality, which he, he questions the whole time. But everybody's telling him in his social reality at that time, at a very, you know, kind of fragile age, you are a degenerate. Do you think he just accepts that and goes, or do you think he never thinks that? I think he would be mad that we're even talking about putting a narrative on it. But do you, what do you think? I'm saying, what do you think he thinks? <laughs> I don't know. We've, we've touched on ideas that like, well, you know, this... Again, Nick, who's to say we've we've touched on some ideas of how he could do this and why. I mean, but I I, I don't know enough to um put a narrative on it. It just seems like here's a guy who was never belonged, whether he didn't accept that he should be accepted or whether he wasn't actually accepted and he accepted that, or he was kicked out and he just, he's all, he was always a weirdo 
and never wanted to engage. And you can let yourself be destroyed to a point where the the act of destruction is all that you have that is, that you are comfortable with. And so being weird and being a maniac, being annoying or gross is what you're comfortable with because that's all you know. And maybe he reached a point where he had done this long enough and this is what he knew more than fitting in. Right. Uh, what I'm saying is it's easy to lean into being a, 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 a de degenerate dissident, whatever, when everybody's telling you so. But does it exist in your mind that you are not wrong? Or do you actually accept it and go like, I am a piece of shit, but I just like to do these things? No, but the, but when you do that, that means you are not wrong. Like those those can both be in yeah, your head yeah. the same. They, they can both be agreed on. That's, an, yeah, you know, is it one of those, is it a self-hatred thing? Or like, ah, I know I'm a piece of shit, but I still like to jerk off to kids I spy in the park. But I'm, oh, I'm is the self hate still getting him off? I I don't think he, <laughs> dude. I I can't say one way or another. Yeah. But like, well, of course you can. I'm just asking you to imagine and what do you think? Do it I might. think he believed that he was a human piece of shit? I mean, he's definitely a dissident because the state the, said you you know. Mm. It's like saying, oh, okay. Let's say this. Um, let's say you get sick or something and you get injured and you file for disability. In the eye of the state, you're disabled. Mm -hmm. Technically, legally, on paperwork, in the bureaucracy, you get a check every month. Disabled. Are you really? Or are you uh, or, less than abled? Yeah. Or whatever the... Whatever the term... Like, right. Yeah, you know what? I collect disability. I'm a fucking normal person. Like, I, I got a back injury, but I'm not, like, disabled. <laughs> right. You know? I can take pictures. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the guy... I mean, well, yeah, I mean... <laughs> You know, it's like the you know the idea of handicap. I mean, it's someone who is quote unquote handicapped is only handicapped when it comes to and does dissident mean you know, does dissident things. mean worthless? Does dissident mean broken? Does like he was smart enough to make a camera out of bottle caps and toilet paper rolls, and he wanted he he wanted to do it enough to make it right. And also, you know, I mean, an artist in general is going to be fucking. A dissident in some way, you know, hopefully if they really mean it. Right. Uh, in the same way Chris Burton is like, you know, he's not fucking covering himself in shit like Gigi Allen, but he's 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 going and, and doing his own thing and, you know, talking about Vietnam and throwing himself, crawling through broken glass on TV and doing those things that are not really normal, but it's just not the kind of thing that they're going to throw you in prison for to be like, don't embarrass us. Right. Like if you're an artist and you're totally in line with the fucking status quo and the state, well then you're just a propagandist. Yeah. 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 You're, right. my, you're Michael Bay. Right. On the other hand, this guy is, you know, he's, he's doing something despite not being a part of the machinery. It could be as simple as he just didn't give a shit about anything. And if he, he was just in a place where he was like, well, all the only thing that he knew was making art in a sense. And if he couldn't paint, he was going to do something else. And yeah, so he just did a thing because I don't know, because you're human, you're a human being. If you don't do something after a while, you know, the, you, you just disintegrate, whether it's mentally or physically, you have to do something. If you don't move, you disintegrate physically. If you don't think you disintegrate mentally. And this yeah. it seems like, he wasn't taking care of himself, like with his beard and his shitty clothes. Well, it, it seems like he kept his brain going by. Doing yeah, this. I think that expands though too when he stops taking the photographs. And then he's just a guy drinking. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. So I think it's like kind of a slow descent of like a guy being told you're shit, and he still kind of keeps up this weird subversive routine with photographs, and then he just abandons art altogether because I think he accepts it as truth mm -hmm. that he is nothing. What do, who's who keep who's feeding that to him? Not the beer, the the idea. The idea. I think it's just society. Um, but like, is that just his interpretation of what's going on? Well, or? for sure. I mean, like for we said, like, there, there's probably like a mean, lot of. What do you mean? Like he's depressed. I think he's pretty fucking depressed, right, man. Yeah, right. yeah, it's not that like he's not getting a fucking letter every day saying, "Hey, oh, by the way, you're still a piece of oh, shit." Oh yeah, from the USSR. <laughs> right, saying, like, yeah, by the way, just remind your daily reminder: you're a fucking piece of shit. Yeah, no, there wasn't mail that did that. <laughs> right. It was. Uh, yeah. In the U.S., there is. <laughs> right. But I, yeah, I think I think it was, uh, you know, a long a long time of of going like, 
well, if everybody's doing, everybody's at the fucking pool but me, you know what I mean? Everybody's like, you know, fucking with some wonderful woman but me. Maybe I am a fucking piece of shit, mm. you know? And he's also kind of leaning into it, but I think it becomes like a self-fulfilling thing where it, it stops being rebellion yes. and it starts being self-pity. Absolutely. Agreed. And, right? And... um I think that's part of the whole reason why he rejects any kind of adulation or fame. <laughs> or or narrative, because everybody's telling him about it's how bad it is. I don't want to hear the narrative. It's What do you mean it's all self-pity? I don't want to hear this. Can, I can't trust the fucking opinions of these robots. Right. Why do I care? You're all just, you're all fucking, you know, just, you're all drones. Why do I care what you think? Right. Um, and that's part of the thing. So once once everything shifts, right, everything changes, and then suddenly the, the Iron Curtain falls, and then so suddenly, now this is you're saying like the '80s, yeah. And then you're not shit anymore, and you're actually a brilliant artist. You're like, ah, you almost had me there, right? Right. right, 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 right. You're not gonna. Well, you're yeah. not, Where's not the camera? <laughs> right. Where's the cardboard camera? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. now, now that I'm old, you're not gonna trick me into right. following. I think that's you. part of it. Certainly. Certainly. I mean, you you get a fucking really serious cynicism and skepticism to every ideology. Right. So when you see like, oh, the fucking ideology of, you know, of, of communism. Yeah. That's falling now. What do I get now? The yeah. Fucking ideology of pure exploitation. <laughs> yes, exactly. Fuck you. Yeah. I'll take my check and drink it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's like kind of like. Can't the- blame him. No, 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 no. At well, all. it's the perfect thing of like what what is so great about Big Brother is that it's, it's an amalgamation of fascism and socialism, and mm-hmm. it's just totalitarianism, mm-hmm. and it's like and the family, and mm-hmm. just don't don't <laughs> it's tr- your brother, don't trust whatever the fucking Church of Truth is telling you. Right. If they're all saying it, doubt it. Yep. <laughs> you know, well, especially if all the everybody's telling you you're. Sh- I mean, no, in any society, everybody tells you you're shit forever, and all of a sudden one day they're like you're amazing. You're like. Are any people Make my it, enemies? Yeah. Have you no conviction? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, yeah, you kind of got to make your own church for a guy like that. And he makes his own church and it looks really fucked up because you're going, there's rats all over the place. And he's like, these oh, are my disciples. They, they follow no, I mean, me. He's going, the rats are nicer than people. <laughs> He's like, you think fucking rats ever threw me in a jail and shocked my brain? Well, he, he's I like, mean, no, these guys are my buddies. He should give rats more credit. Pals. Yeah. They Plus, would if they could. Well, they're dragging their tails all over the photographs, creating all kinds of beautiful, intricate designs. Sure, right before they get it all stuck together, you know? Anyway, fellas, that's what I got for you. That's really fucking fascinating. This guy seems like a real eccentric. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was that was the thing. Like, his rep in, in Czechoslovakia was just like, he's just an eccentric. We're kind of trying to fix him. Uh, it's not working out <laughs> really well. It's like the, behind the Iron Curtain, the uh, famous artist. Yeah. It's just this guy who's just like, ah. Well, you know, you get the, anytime you have like this, you know, whether you say a dream deferred or let's say, um, a, 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 a piece of coal pressurized or yeah. a flame snut, like, you know, uh, the Gulag Archipelago was written in fucking Alexander, uh, not Alexander. Um, oh, Solzhenitsyn. Solzhenitsyn in his head. Yeah. He wrote the whole thing word for word in his head while he was in a Gulag. Yeah. You know, you're going to get with certain people, one in a million, one in whatever, you know, uh, man search for meaning, things like that. Like you get, you're going to get this blow off valve of brilliance because of the yeah. pressure you put on people. Yes. Hundreds of thousands will die. Sure. Not, not Societies not will crumble yeah, and yeah, fall yeah, yeah. and rise from the ashes, but you're going to get, you know, the rose that grew from concrete. I mean, you yeah. could, you could have got that and it would have been happy painting. And so, and so that's, that's kind of a thing too, where it's like, it's not really very firm either on the aspect of pornography where you go like, all right, this guy's just going and creeping around on, on women and taking photographs without their permission. Also, he probably wasn't even allowed to get close to them. But you go like, who's to say if he's doing that with lust or yeah. like the dream of companionship if he, if he wasn't such a pain in right. the balls? Right, I mean, and, and pornography is such a loose definition. The definition, the definition of pornography is I know it when I see it. I mean, yes. if he had right. done that, And in, it's not. If he had done that in a capitalist society, 
where everybody was having a good time, there would be different connotations about. Well, it. I'm sure the people were having a good time at the pool. Sure, sure, but but it's it, it differently than it would like in this Is it, quote unquote free it, his society. Thing, if he could have sold it, then they would have saw it as merit. Sure, it, sure, or, or sure, uh, okay. uh, valuable. What do you mean? Because he uh, he he presumably couldn't have sold that those fi- pictures. But I don't think he was even trying to. Right. I, nope, I, nobody I, will even I, talk to. Him. I get it, but. In a capitalist society, if it sells, then it's then it's worth something. Right. Then it, then sure. Fine. Which is the world he would have grown up in, if not for right. Right. Um. I just. Uh... And then so this is another thing I wanted to ask you about too, which which kind of fascinates me, uh, like what you're saying with the, the the world of Europe and art, and the fallout from everything that happens, is that it's so funny that it's 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 all almost born out of an artist community in, in Austria. And then like all of those ideas that come out of like the coffee houses in Austria, then work their ways through art and writing and everything else into governments mm-hmm. and political parties, and then cause them to all kill each other in Europe. And then you have the art that falls out of all of that trauma. Isn't that fucking bizarre to think yeah. about? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, holy shit. Yeah. All the coffee houses in Vienna and stuff like that. But I feel like there was also uh, st- where they there were um, it, well they outlawed the coffee houses at a certain point, right? <laughs> because too many people were getting around chopped up exchanging it's, ideas. It's, it's the original crack house, mm, yeah, it's a chop house, uh, trap house. Uh, um, but then I think there was also like, Gunny Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gunny, hey Gunny Joe, Joe. Hey, you have Joe. a fuck with Joe? <laughs> Joe, you have a fuck with Kathy? I got something new. It's called Charlie <laughs> and White Girl. <laughs> um. I got Red Bull all types of shit. <laughs> you name it. <laughs> I um, got a camera that smells like balls. <laughs> so let me yeah, let me okay, clarify what you're saying here. You're saying that it's interesting that uh, the the coffee house culture in Vienna, yes, spurned this revolution of thought. Yes, that that then then, then goes back to multiple countries. Governments in different ways, like you know, through. Don't forget, like we were saying, uh, who, who was all there? Like it was like Freud, Freud, you know, Adolf Marx, Hitler, yeah. Marx. Right, they right. were all in uh, Vienna coffee shops, mm-hmm. and they were all you know just getting really fucking caffeinated up and talking about like, what if we did this and all this shit. Well, yeah, they were they were spinning out their thoughts a, a hundred different ways. Like, oh, I want to fuck my mom. I think we should seize private property. Yeah, <laughs> uh, exactly. But also, like, you know, the, a lot of you know, I got a screenplay idea. <laughs> you know, um, uh, <laughs> you know, there's Mar- no Mar- characters, okay? <laughs> no dialogue, <laughs> no moving picture. Mar- Marx, Marx's t- takedown of of capitalism is totally on point. His prescription kind of ignores a little bit of human nature. Uh, Freud was doing a little bit too much cocaine. Yeah. His own, but like, it's not like they were totally wrong about things. And then also like with, as far as Nazi Germany, a lot of shit wouldn't have happened if the U S didn't put sanctions on them after world war one. No, of course. Yeah. It's, it's a whole thing, but there is like almost, like, let's not blame the drugs here. people. Th- there's almost like, uh, yeah. Woodrow th- Wilson had the Spanish flu and it completely changed the negotiations. Oh my God. Oh, the fuck pigs. The thought- now, they're here, now they're here to arrest us for thoughts. The thought, thought cops are going to cops. But yeah, I think there's I think there's something interesting to almost like the hesitation you would take to make dissident art like after everything that happened where you go like, oh, this fucking whole thing was born out of fucking art. They were, of course. They were all goddamn those, artists. Those, those I mean, people. you were saying struggle. Mm. Fucking Mein Kampf is my struggle. You know what I mean? But yeah, those, sure, are, sure. those are the people who, when they get into power because the struggle is for them to get into power, they're, they're paranoid knowing yeah. how they got into power that they have to stop all the people who could be them. Right. And that's also why they keep the channel going on like the fucking cubism uh, propaganda. Right. And, you know, Goebbels with the fucking propaganda machine. It was right. like, and then, and we, the, and we film, got, we and got film. here on art. Yeah. Art is well, what brought us here. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I think art can be weaponized. For sure. Right, but it, it doesn't mean art is a weapon. No, no, but I would say... It's interesting to think about the reluctance to make it after you see that it can be. Oof. Uh, yeah, but you know, he just didn't want any part of that. He already had his I mean, fucking I, ass kicked. That the- thought is the weapon of the tyrant. 
Of course. See how dangerous art is? No, it's it's Stalin, direct See, quote. An idea, I can, an, an idea is way more dangerous than a pistol. Why wouldn't I outlaw ideas? Right. Uh, the movie Equilibrium. I right. got here on an idea. <laughs> right. Ideas exactly. brought me here. Right. I'm the most dangerous motherfucker in the room, man. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Check out my style. <laughs> I'm a, can, Also, everyone get out of the room. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a steel man. <laughs> <laughs> and I live in seclusion. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, um, art, it, art is supposed to be transgressive, right? I don't know. Yeah. I'm just saying obvious shit. No, no, no. But, but I mean, we're talking about real life outcomes right. to what starts as a couple of guys with too much coffee. Well, because there's, <laughs> because re, I mean, reality is not, not reality isn't totally objective, but it's the most objective thing that we have. Right. But and art is just more subjective than that. And so when anytime there's a little bit of fucking gray area in a piece, well, then you have one person sees it like this and then they start a war off of it. And one person, let's say you read the fucking Quran and you see it as a beautiful book of peace. And then some asshole over here in a cave thinks it's a fucking call to arms. Or you, you see anytime the, you, there's subjectivity to it. Then all of a sudden you can start drawing lines in the sand. There's subjectivity to the fucking constitution. Some people are you think, talking about the cave with the heavy hangers again? Is that what you're fucking? I'm no, only but the, talking the, about the, the, the heavy you see the treaty from World War One as a treaty, and the other and someone else sees the treaty as World War One as a capitulation of your entire society, and you right. have to destroy an entire. How did the word treat get in here? <laughs> so is, yeah, Versailles, you're on the air. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Say your wife. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a uh, it's a very interesting guy. Yeah, I mean the the whole the whole world is is um it it was such a a pro art world and then you know some things leaked into and then it was an approved art world. Yes. Um. It's 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 really fucking weird, and I don't know if the guy is just a maniac or a uh, um, a pervert. Mm-hmm. Who's to say? I mean, usually one, a little is bit the, of both. Uh, usually the pervert is a maniac. Hey man, listen, Michael Jackson made some good music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, did you're he? right? Didn't he? You're right. Did some I... people like you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. He did for sure. Um, so you would say uh, on the question of the, the dream deferred, it was yeah. uh, just a, a a light. He was a he was a, a um, premature ejaculator. Uh, yeah, he he festered in the sun. Yeah, but even then, that festering, he never exploded. Right, but like you know, you let's say um, uh, 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 I'm I'm just gonna piggyback up your comment. Mm-hmm. If you have a piece of bread, and it gets moldy. That's the bread going bad and getting moldy. But you can take that mold and make penicillin. Right. And that's what this guy's art is. Sure. Yeah, very nice. I think it's pretty good. He did talk about fighting over pieces of bread in prison. <laughs> the with, rats. And with, <laughs> with cellmate. We put po- five rats on top of each with other. With the other rogues. He calls the, them the other rogues. <laughs> well, that's a romantic uh, uh, the phrase. Oh, it is, it is, for sure. You, you rogue. Know. He's like, what could be wrong with this fucking guy? He's like, wow, when, once, they, their glo- once their gloves were off, they took all the power oh, from me. Right. <laughs> oh, I love X Men and X Women. <laughs> <laughs> Former women. <laughs> <laughs> Gender's gay, dude. You know, gender is gay, and it is not shit. real. I don't believe in it. Yeah, um, I think uh, we should leave it there, fellas. Um, I. Uh, I really enjoy talking to you about this. I mean, Very that was interesting. Fun. That was fun uh, thank you to Morgan for bringing this to my Thanks, attention. Morgan. Yes, Morgan. And this is not the Morgan in Michigan that has not taught her baby to read. This oh, is, good. This, this is, is Morgan a, Fairchild. This is Morgan in uh, uh, in, uh, in <laughs> ha- ha- Hollywood, California. Oh, and um, Morgan Fairchild. And you know who even knows if anybody's listening to this, but we're still making it. That's art. And that's art. I don't even know what you're saying. What do you mean? Listen, man, we could be making this for fucking rats in a cave, but we're still Shout making out to the it. rats. You know what? Shout out to you rats. Draw on your tails over your zoons. Yeah, be careful because you don't. Get, if you get stuck together, you can't get out. So. But you could be a rat king. Uh, yeah, you become like a, a hydra of rats. A rat king. Yeah. It's, it's a mess. And hail hydra. Yeah. All right, I'm going to say goodnight. My name is John Fahey. Good night. I'm Aaron Peter. Matt Good night, everybody. We love you.
Stop and Scott